Yes, Trey Gowdy is leaving Congress, apparently to spend more time with his hair. <laughs> I kid, I like the guy, but look at him over the years. He's got a mohawk, goatee, <laughs> sideburns, then a beard, then he adds glasses and gets rid of the beard. The guy's more looks than Lady Gaga. Sunday, Gowdy said he's leaving politics because he's lousy at it. I was a pretty good prosecutor, I think, uh, but I've been a pretty lousy politician. I see um, multiple sides of a single issue. Um, and the fact that someone disagrees with me um, does not make me challenge uh, their love of the country. It doesn't make me believe that they're corrupt. Um, I I've got a lot of friends on the other side of the aisle. I think the manner in which we get places matters. And in politics, too often, winning is the only thing that matters. And uh, look, every hero I have is lost, every one of them. So. Losing is not the worst thing in the world. Not knowing what you believe and not caring enough about it to fight for it, that's the worst thing in the world. Do you think now, underneath that cowlick, he, ha he has a point. He's lamenting tribalism, the name-calling, the smearing of intentions mm. by mind-reading adversaries, all driven by team sport politics. Take the memo controversy. It was the Super Bowl for political point-dexters. Everyone took sides even before reading the damn thing. <laughs> Of course, no one in the media seemed to mind tribalism before when only one side fought to win. For the left, the politics was always personal and deemed their opponents, the right, as evil. Now, the, learn, the right has learned from the left, and Republicans are now as feisty as the lefties of old, fueled by a president who may be the least ideological one I've ever seen. The result, a fiery feedback loop where one side accuses the other of divisiveness, which leads to endless counter accusations of the same thing. Yet, simply agreeing that we're all guilty of this might help solve the problem. Will that ever happen? Who knows? Divisiveness is easy and it's profitable, for it feels good to point a finger and label people. And if you disagree with me, you're probably a racist, homophobic <laughs> traitor. <laughs> It's true. Uh, Kimberly, what do you see him going? It's maybe a style segment on Fox and Friends. Oh, my gosh. Come <laughs> on. Uh, I I'm, like him, though. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of his. I think he's really bright. He was a phenomenal prosecutor. He had a great reputation. You know, he handled a, a large, you know, volume of material and really stuck with it in terms of the Benghazi hearings. And, you know, I, I think he's you know, a virtuous person. And I like what he had to say in terms of being able to see all sides of an issue. And because someone disagrees with you doesn't mean that they're a bad person um, or their politics or their intentions, you know, should be a question. So I'm excited to see what he does next. I don't know. Maybe here. I'm Jesse. Yeah. One lucky guy. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, Dana, Every time we hear about the assessment of intensity and tribalism, every time I think about it, then I think about the past. We've had assassinations and civil wars. Mm -hmm. So is this kind of, is this idea that we're being divisive a bit overwrought? I mean, we did have an actor kill a president, yes. you know? I remember um, when, when I talked to Mitch McConnell last week, he said, let me put everyone's mind at ease. And he went back and said, you know, we used to actually beat each other up right. uh, on, the, on the floor. Um, and I think that Trey Gowdy seems very relieved. This is a decision that he's wrestled with for the last couple of cycles um, because he realized, I think, early on that, wow, this might not be for me. There's a lot of different ways that you can serve your country um, and be a public servant, and you don't always have to run for office. It's the endless fundraising, the um, inability to actually do what he wants to do, which is the law. But he is somebody that you would certainly want as your own personal lawyer if you uh, if he decides to go into law. You would want him as one. that. Um, but you'd want him as a neighbor or a teacher or a friend, and I think he's going to try to do <laughs> oh my God, He's going to teach a little bit as well. You're like a neighbor. I'm a, big I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. And you know what? Ever since the um, Benghazi hearings when mm -hmm. he would be willing to talk to you yeah. and you didn't have to and he would just give it to you straight uh, that was certainly welcome and and different no wonder he didn't fit in he's good he'd you be a good member of a book club too don't you think oh no be... yeah yeah All book right, club member i think we're going too far here uh Juan, um i think um the the conflict is heightened because Republicans have learned from the Democrats on how to fight. Don't you think that's true? No. I, you guys I, were brutal. You guys so from the ridiculous. 60s were so In the 60s. You, everybody, the was, 60s. everybody you disagreed with was evil. Wow. You're started with the, the, started the with the Vietnam War. Well, let's go back to the Civil War. But I'm just saying. Well, the Democrats, right? Yeah. So I'm just, slavery. But, but I don't see. I mean, to me, Trey Gowdy, you know, it, by the way, I think very competent prosecutor. But what he did during Benghazi, two years a beaten up on Hillary Clinton and then coming to conclude there's nothing here. I mean, I don't understand it. I like the fact that he now says you don't have to 
you know, turn your opponents into devils. I think, boy, but now he's leaving. And he's won, by the way, Jesse, unbelievable to me, but 41 Republicans who are, are leaving this Congress, nine committee chairmen, mm -hmm. including people like Trey Gowdy, who does have respect. Uh, as I say, I, I don't like what he did with Benghazi, but he does have some respect as a man who knows the law, a man who could have been one of the, President Trump's considerations for attorney general. But now you see all these people fleeing, and guess why they're fleeing? There's an erratic president, and there's a chance the Democrats are going to have a big November this year. Jesse, can you tie this into the Super Bowl? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think um, I don't think Gowdy's leaving because he's going to lose his seat. No. Uh, so no. Um, I like the hair shots. Can we put the six hair <laughs> shots back? I want to pick my best one. I think the one on the upper left, if you want to DVR it back, was probably the best look. There it is right there with yeah. the scruffy goatee. Yeah. In terms Very of the, the, the Benghazi hearings, Juan just said that, you know, nothing ever came of it. Basically, we found out that they didn't protect the consulate on the e on 9/11's anniversary. Couldn't save our own men and women because they didn't have assets in place, and then lied to the American people and to the victims' families to their face and said it was about a video when they knew all along it was a terrorist attack. I actually think he got to the bottom of that. He looked relieved because all you do is dial for dollars. I heard they like put you in a room for like four hours a day and you fundraise. That sounds terrible. I mean, the swamp stinks. I'd want to get out of it, too. He's probably going to get a nice paycheck pretty soon. Mm.